Now today I set up a little goal here. I'd like to get the wheels either in prime or get at least get the first coat of prime on them. They still need a little detailing, some small details. We did most of the work. We got them almost ready for prime yesterday. Glenn on our way back to his house picked up some new vinyl. So sooner or later we're going to get to recover that seat. We'll try to do that on video. Here's one of the things we really need to do wheels. You need, and this, this is from Harbor Freight. It's one of the really cheesy wheel balancers they make. It works perfectly. No reason not to use it. And some of the other little ancillary projects. Next time we have some clear in the gun and either doing the wheels or what, we're going to get a couple coats of clear on this. Mark had put another decal on there. We also have the windshield on Glenn's project. Do I want to do that as a separate video? That's a, that's a relatively... Uh, uh, not complex, but something I'd like to do accurately and uh, show the little tricks we use to do it and get it done right. So let's get started. I just, it, it's unbelievable. It, it wasn't long ago when we had uh, five bikes at once in the cellar and we're down, we're coming down the home stretch right now. And Glenn's Kawasaki, getting these wheels done will be a big, once I get these wheels, I'll, I'll feel like I really have a major accomplishment anyway. These will be one of the focal points of the bike, I'm sure. And what I want to do with the big wire wheel, I want to get this area where the tire, where the tire actually seats. I want to get that good and rough because I want the paint to really stick there. shiny in this this area here where the tire is going to seal. I want it to be just a little rough so that the primer gets a good bite in there. Now it's this another thing this edge right here what we're trying to accomplish is to roughen this up. We've already sanded it just make it with a little bit rougher with the with the heavy wire wheel because this is where when we in, when we put the tire on and we're going to try to do it without tire wrenches we're going to try to do it by hand so that we don't damage the wheel we really want, this is where the paint is going to be under a lot of stress, right at that edge. So it's just that edge. I can work the whole rim that way. Real important not to have any, any anything that's shiny, anything that isn't scratched. Once that edge, let me shut this off. Don't worry, I get a headache too. Once that edge is scratched, then we're ready. We're going to do the next step on the wheels. Now the next step is to get the valve area. And Glenn's already got the curvy girls. These are 11.3s. They come two sizes. Let me just go back over this for one second for people who never ordered curvy girls. <clears throat> Let's give them a little free advertisement here. These are the valve stems that I've got pretty much on all the bikes now. And they come two sizes. They come 11.3 and 8.0. And if you order the wrong ones, which, which every time I've ever ordered from them, uh, not almost every day, probably half the time, they send the wrong size. So it's up to you to order the right size. Well, in any case, this is the whole point. Here's their, their address. The, <clears throat> the whole idea... They are good quality things. I've had them many years. They come in every color. I've got them on all the bikes. But I want to get a real nice, neat, when I put that valve in, I, I don't want to go over paint. 
I want to go over the raw metal that's there because there's a little o-ring and I also don't want to scratch up I have these special low uh, very very small nuts that go on the bolts or else I guess I could put a washer here but I don't want to go in here with a wrench and chew this all up so that oh as he ducks it over that's just one little thing you can do to make it a little bit neater job now next step I've got a back mask anything I don't clean and back mask the areas I don't want to have paint on. Now, another thing, if you're trying to paint wheels and you don't have a wheel balancer, you're going to try to do it with a broomstick or hold it out in midair or... I've tried to do all of that stuff. The, the wheel balancer from Harbor Freight, I believe, and Pokey donated it to our cause, but I, I know it's under $30. Even if you don't have a coupon, and probably it's three dollars if you have a coupon, <laughs> it really is really inexpensive. But painting a wheel without one can be really uh, challenging. With the right, the right wheel balancer, it's a piece of cake. Now we need a hole in here, of course, to get our tire, the rod, and getting this back masking done correctly certainly is a, a really important thing. Now, back here, this is the part I wanted to show up close. What has to happen here, if you see that little ridge, there's a little ridge in here. If this gets filled up with paint, getting the disc on, is you're gonna either chip the paint or ruin it or something. So what I've always done is I've always, and, and as many of these as I've done, I've back masked every one of them. It's a little bit of a nuisance doing this because it's a very narrow little groove that you want to confine. And we also, here's the other thing, I want to paint in here. We're going to see that. Now, it's funny, Glenn originally started, we were going to make these wheels white, but we have enough green paint left over with the, he decided yesterday we're going to make them green which I think is the right choice. I think that would be cool. But the thing we don't have, I don't want to paint them green over silver because it may change. That color is almost like a candy apple color. That you, you might change the tone of the color, just like you can change candy apple from a, kind of a red cast to a, uh, an orange cast by going over gold instead of silver. So I don't want to do that. Now this other piece doesn't matter. That's gonna, the, the, this little lip sticks up. So we don't really, I don't really care about that lip because I'm not gonna see in there, but, but I do wanna have, and a number 11, this is an exacto number 11 blade you should have in the shop, always a good idea. Now I can just trim this and that lip should be pretty good. Now, I also want to, need more tape, more tape, more tape. What I want to do is I want to do each one of these bolt holes. I don't want paint going down into this. This is the disc brake, so I don't want to have that. I'll just show you how I do one of them. Not, not real rocket science, but a number 11 blade, again, makes it a lot easier than if you have a, a butter knife or something or a screwdriver or whatever you're trying to use it for. So I'll do the rest of these off camera. It's pretty redundant. I got a mask off the middle of this and we'll be ready to prime up a wheel. Now because I only have one wheel balancer, I can only really do one at a time. So I've got to kind of, while one is drying, I'll be working on the other one. Now it's just a habit of mine. I like to back mask. I don't like to paint the inside of the wheel. I'm not sure why, it's just a personal habit. I like to see the paint end all maybe a quarter inch around the rim. Again, I've seen people paint it. I don't think it makes a lot of difference. Just personal preference on my part. Now, you really don't want to get any paint around this where the valve is going to seal. You want to kind of mask that off. I do anyway. And that should do it. That should give us a pretty good chance at, i to put one down the middle here, a wide wheel. 
Anyway, we can just take And we're ready to put the prime on this one. Now the whole idea is while the prime is drying on this one, and it usually takes about an hour for it to dry, we can be working and masking off and cleaning up the other wheel, get the other wheel ready to be put in the wheel balancer, and of course, have its thing done. Okay. But having that wheel balancer, well, the piece of tape, having that wheel balancer, such a nice thing. Final little thing we can do here, just to keep the wheel balancer from turning into a Kawasaki green wheel balancer. Not really a super necessary thing, but Makes it a little bit nicer anyway. And see, this is where what I was saying, this is going to show in here the way Kawasaki makes the wheels. And, well, I guess all, every sport bike is a, just a little bit different, but these wheels aren't that dissimilar anyway. And what Glenn is going to have, we're going to have that, that the whole wheel is green and the stripe is that metallic blue, which should accent it pretty nice. Now, this is the old set of wheels, well, the spare set of wheels that I have for the, uh, the 750. The reason I wanted to show it is there's the, all of the areas on this, where they're cast, you can almost not th think it's a casting. And that was from sanding the coats of primer one by one. Just just filling it all in, getting it all smooth. And it really, boy, did that make a, a nice difference. But every one of the bikes, now we've done the wheels on Glenn's Ducati. These wheels, these are all on the YouTube channel, of course. We polished these. I was looking for a little bit different look. These, I'm just... I had to do the stripe twice. I made a, uh, you can go back and look at all that. And these wheels, what I am, one of my things that for the future project is when it's time to swap tires, I'm gonna be painting them. They're the only ones left that aren't painted. And the RD wheels. And they do have, when you're done with this whole process, they do have a, you go for a ride, you just wipe it with a microfiber. You don't even have to worry about wiping dirt off. And I really think having a little bit of extra effort into the wheels, just makes the overall the overall look at a motorcycle is just so much nicer gives it a little custom touch and basically what we're doing is very very little money a lot of work some of it dirty and some of it a little labor intensive but but certainly no trip to the uh, the bank to, to take out a thousand dollars or anything now this wheel the rear wheel Took a lot more little detailing steps that, uh, well, we got them anyway, not a big deal. But the, the, po the point I wanted to make was the earlier you can catch these things, where there's a little defect, there was a little edge that needed some dressing off, it's a lot easier to do it when it's in primer. And you just go outside and hit it with another, another shot of primer. Once you have it in paint, now it just gets a, just a little more labor intensive. But right now, it looks like we're going to get, be able to get, in today's session, be able to get both wheels in primer. And boy, will that be nice. And we may even get some time to do some wet sanding this afternoon if the baby uh, takes a nap. We never know about that. Anyway, we're going to just go switch this wheel out with the other one. Now the same thing would apply to this, and, and boy, I can't emphasize enough, keep shaking that can, do your can-can thing. And the one thing not to do is just Now self-etching primer is really good for this application. And what's happened is several times I've bought very expensive primer, I bought that epoxy primer, 
It was really expensive. It was like $80 a quart. I thought that would be some improvement. Nothing. And a lot of times, it's for our applications, you're just wasting your money if you spend some. Sometimes it's expensive stuff. When the stuff you really would like to have that really does the job is, you know, more sandpaper and more Sickens M600 and, and more labor. But, you know, none of this stuff jumps out of the can. And if you really want to have it, it's just a question of work. And I get a lot of satisfaction to my myself out of seeing something like this. It's, this is a 30-year-old motorcycle, maybe more. I'm not sure what year this is. But, and when we're done with this, it's really going to be nice. Trust me on that. This is going to be a village market killer. He'll win that free bagel every time. Mark will have to buy him breakfast every time. Well, in the course of this session, we wound up getting two nice wet coats of primer on there. That's going to dry up overnight. The next step, it's got to dry up overnight. And I think we'll be, well, the next time we get to work on it, because the baby's on his way right now. So this was amazing. We got this done right at the nick of time. Anyway, hope you picked up some good information. And, of course, thanks for watching.